Hello, welcome to the Bespoke Unit, and in today's video, we are with Klaus Kellner, and he's going to be showing us how to properly light a cigar. Hello, and welcome to Bespoke Unit. I'm CP. I'm Paul Anthony. And I'm Klaus Kellner. And today, Klaus, you're going to be showing us how to properly light a cigar. So, take it away. Take it away. So we're sitting here in the beautiful Dominican Republic just to frame the scene a little bit better. Mm. And we're going to be reviewing all three of these different Winston Churchill blends by Davidoff. And we thought, why not, as we're going to be cutting and lighting the cigar, see how it's done by a true mm. expert. So class, by the way, could you tell us where we are? We're actually in a beautiful resort in the north coast of the island in the province of Puerto Plata. So we are in the Ocean Club, a luxury collection resort in the Costa Norte. <laughs> A little bit of a tongue twister, it is, yeah. but it is a beautiful <laughs> resort. Yeah, it's absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> mm. So without further ado, let's get to cutting and lighting this. So we are smoking this beautiful Winston Churchill cigar, Robusto shape. Um, it is a parejo shape, mm -hmm. so a straight cigar with a round head. Um, different cigars need to be cut differently depending on their shape. But this shape is actually the most typical, the most uh, normal shape that you will be finding in the market. Mm. And there's different cutting tools. For example, you have there with you one that can do a V cut, but I'm a fan of the straight cut. Um, and in particular, I'm a fan of the double guillotine, mm. right? So there's single, there's double guillotine, uh, there's V cuts, they're hole punchers. Um, but I like my cigar uh, being cut with an opening that is much wider. Mm. Uh, some people have different preferences and that will be depending on the person, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to cut this cigar, you would probably want to start uh, if it's your cigar, not if you're cutting it for somebody else, right? Mm. If it's your cigar, uh, what is normal, is appropriate, is maybe moisten up the head a little bit. So you might... Uh, Shells. Charles smiling at me yeah. because that's one of his preferred techniques. Yeah. <laughs> so you will probably moisten it up a little bit, you know, add a little bit of saliva. Mm. That will allow that when you cut, tobacco doesn't fly everywhere, mm. right? Different people cut differently, but... Is your cleaner cut? It does a cleaner mm. cut. It allows you for, to, for the tobacco to not just fly anywhere. You want to get a cut more or less right where the head starts to curve, right? So not too on the top don't skim it too much not too in the bottom if you cut way too in the bottom you're going to basically cut below where the glue uh, sticks the tobacco at the head mm. and tobacco will fly all, all over and your cigar will start to unravel so mm. you want to cut more or less right there right where there's still glue and not too on the top <laughs> make a clear opening sometimes you can use your fingers to help you guide you right and you just cut right there. And then I put my finger there sometimes so that that way it doesn't fly all over the place. That's just something I do. Yeah, I don't have Be it. careful to not get your finger in there at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's on top, right? <laughs> I mean, it's something that I have learned to do. Do not do this at home, kids. <laughs> I mean, you can see there's a clear cut, right? And mm, yeah. it's not so bad. Nice clean cap. Yep. And so what do we do now? Now we can actually light the cigar Ooh. a little later. Um, what is also very typical is at this moment you can uh, check for the draw. Mm. I mean, if we're talking about a Davos cigar, hum as perfectly as possible, humanly possible, these cigars are 99.99999% of the time not going to ever fail you because we do the quality control so that these cigars are perfect the moment you purchase. I mean, we're all human, you never know, but you always check for draw has a nice open draw and then you have your option to light right you have your soft flame that sound is mm. great and then you have your torch you can't really see it. it's too light outside sure but we are outside maybe soft flame might be a little hard because you have wind here mm. I do have it very high up but what you want to do is you want to tilt your cigar about a 45 degree angle, right? And you want to aim more or less to the, to the top of the cigar, right here. You do not want to aim to the bottom. If you aim to the bottom, the flame might catch underneath and burn the side of your cigar. So you want to aim up here. 
What I like about single flame torches, instead of like four, three, is that it's a lot more precise. So you can actually point exactly where you want and it's mm. gonna burn there. So if I'm pointing there, it's gonna burn right there. Mm. And then what you wanna do once you have it going is you actually wanna turn the cigar with the flame and make sure all the edges are well lit. Mm -hmm. So, right? And you wanna point right there on the top. That's probably gonna be the easiest. Again, if you go in the bottom, it's, the flame is gonna catch underneath. And then you see that the top is already gray and it's burning with a nice bright orange. You start turning it. And you try to even it out. And you make sure that every single corner is well lit. And most important is that your cigar is well lit the whole way through. If one side of your cigar is not lit, it will canoe on you. If you only light the center, it's gonna tend to tunnel on you. Mm. So it's very important that the whole, ci whole cylinder is well lit. You can blow on the foot of the cigar and basically see that it's all nice bright and orange red and you can see where it's lit and where it's not lit. This cigar is a very cigar, easy cigar to lit because it's a very light tobacco. Sure. And then if you're lighting it for somebody else, right, you do this. And that's instead of blowing the cigar, you're feeding oxygen to the cigar, letting the burn line recede. Mm -hmm. And then it's easy. Get the cigar. Now, if you're having a hard time lighting your cigar and it's a very thick tobacco, it's taking longer to light, you might want to help it with feeding it some oxygen. So you might want to do this. Basically, you're feeding oxygen into the, into the flame and you're helping the whole cigar get lit. Mm. But at that moment, you're burning the cigar at a higher temperature than it should be lit. You do not need to puff on it as you are lighting it. That is not necessary. Most people do it. It's not bad. But basically, you are at that moment feeding a lot of oxygen into the fire, increasing the temperature, and you are burning the oils. Where it's burning black, that is the burn line, right? This is a very thin burn line because it's a very light cigar. If it was a thicker cigar, it would be thicker. And then you can see it's burning very gray. It's very soft mm. tobacco, sure. mm. right? So I don't not need to feed it fire. So with know. like the late hour, for example, that's a heavier tobacco. So you may get a thicker burn line and it may be take a little bit more. Do you refer to it as toasting when you're on the foot or do you just call it the lighting process? Yeah, it can be toasting. It's a toasting process. It's, that's a normal term. Sure. Uh, basically, it's also very important to heat it up before the cigar, uh, before you start puffing on it, right? But make sure that it is a great temperature. Every tobacco needs to burn at a different temperature. That's, that's very specific. But you toast it, right? And then you can start going at it. And you just have to be very, very uh, cautious of not burning too much on the sides and just keeping up with the burn line. It's very important that you let the burn line recede because if you are just puffing on it at that moment, uh, you're gonna be uh, tasting smoke that is that did not combust at the right temperature. Mm, sure. Now, I'm getting technical. <laughs> so it's good, we like technical. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> any questions more about, about this? You know, you cut, right? You toast. You take a puff. It's that simple. But you have to be very traditional you have it's a ritual you have to be patient you cannot rush it right it's a simple process but it is a process that can take time do not rush it take your time because if you do it properly you take your time then the cigar will reward you sure you know it's very important to take your time be patient if you do it right from the beginning then your cigar will reward you and will it will be less likely that it will fail you sure and if there's a common issue, for example, that you've lit the cigar and it started to canoe on you, 
and you've got like just say a quarter of the cigar that's not lit is it just the same process 45 degree angle and try and get the burn on the piece that's not that's not yet combusted again that's why i like single flame torch i can be very precise if i have a side that is not burning right it's very usual that means that that side of the tobacco probably had a, a nice little pocket of oils that it was burning around you just go straight at it uh, okay you know but the most important is uh you ash it you ash it first you go straight at it and then basically help the part that was not catching up catch up so help your cigar it's very important to help your cigar sure you know and if your cigar turns off on you you ash it and then you light it sure you do not try to light it with the ash because you're not getting to the tobacco that's inside that's mm. off Sure. I mean, that's a video for another time, and you'll see a link below on uh, can you smoke a cigar once it's gone out. So we'll cover that topic a little, in a little bit more detail in another video. But I think with all that being said, any more questions there, Sean? I think uh, that was a very thorough explanation. <laughs> for us. You thought this was going to be a two-minute video. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> so well, thanks a lot for your time as always, class, and uh, please check out the links below for many more tutorials as well as very detailed and. Um, uh, what's the word? Many comprehensive, <laughs> comprehensive oh. videos. We've Pl been we've been, been now for like plethora. yeah a plethora, a plethora of videos for the last five days. That we've been here in the Dominican Republic, culminating in a uh, feature-length documentary on how cigars are made by Davidoff here in the Dominican Republic. So with all of that being said, please like this video if you found it helpful. Leave any comments or questions below about the lighting process or anything else to do with cigars. Subscribe to the channel for all the aforementioned videos and. My name's Paul Anthony. I'm CP. And I'm Fast Kellner. We'll see you next time. Take care. Well, Charles Philippe and I really hope you enjoyed that video. Please also check out the full length documentary of how Davidoff makes cigars. And down here, there's a full playlist of our whole Dominican experience.